Ah, oh, Wilkins. Still up? Yes, sir. Good morning, sir. I stayed up to firstly draw your attention to a letter about urgent which... Ah, oh, yes, I found it. Thanks so much. And as you're up, you might help me to clear a bit of space. Now, she may arrive any time, and we must have plenty of room. Now, if she lies there... Pardon my word, sir, really. I was about to tell you, sir, I stayed up first to tell you about that letter. And secondly, to inform you that a large box had been delivered. It was too big for the hall, so I had it brought in here. Here. Here? Here? Where? Why didn't you say so instead of blabbering away? It's just what I've been waiting for. Wilkins? Where is she? She, sir? Don't dither, man. Anybody think you're the one who'd come home late? She? The mummy? She, sir? The mummy? Really, Wilkins, this conversation is in danger of turning into a third-rate music hall crosstalk. Where is the box? Oh, the box, sir. I had it placed over there. It looks very grim, if I may say so, sir. Very grim. Wilkins, you may leave me. I wish to be alone with my princess. Uh, just so. Good morning, sir. <laughs> All the crazy uncles sending me a mummified princess. They're telling me to open her immediately. I haven't got enough troubles. <laughs> Princess indeed. A ghastly bundle of scraggy skin and bone, I expect. Oh. Why, your, your Majesty, I humbly... Oh, Lord, I, I must be dreaming. I mean, your Royal Highness, I mean... Well, hello. Hello yourself, oh insulting one. Oh, but, but this is ridiculous. I thought I heard you speaking to me. I, I must be dreaming. Your Highness. Yes, I spoke. I am Princess Raviola. Three thousand years have I waited for this moment. I was your uncle's dearest possession. He excavated me. Now I am you. He excavated you? Yes, I see. Excavated, and now you're mine. But what? I am his gift to you. Do with me as you will. Oh, I know this is too good to be true. I am dreaming. Return me to your uncle then, or oh insulting one. First I am a bundle of skin and bones, now I am a myth. So you do not want your uncle's dearest possession. I, who have had Egyptian princes, beg for a glance. How? Oh, go on. Yes, I have really. My outside cart and once. I, who have had kings, beg for my hand and scorned by you. Return me whence I came. Oh, no, it's not that, Princess. If I'm not dreaming, then you're very welcome. But, th but this is a bachelor's flat and Wilkins will have... I am a spinster, yet never was I afraid to be alone with a man in the desert. So am I afraid to be alone with you here? I bet you said that to all the princes. I mean, I bet the sand made you shoes pinch. Uh, how, how did you find the sand? Very hot on the feet and all that sort of thing? Under the spell of burning desert kisses. I noticed nothing. Oh, 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 let me out of this. Let me out of this and I will tell you more. Come on, princess.
Oh, I don't care whether this is a dream or not. I think you're the loveliest, most marvelous. If I'd only met you 3,000 years ago, I wouldn't have slept until I'd married you. I mean, I say, do you think I might show you to the spare room? I really must get some sleep. So must you after this long journey. I have already slept for 3,000 years, waiting for you. Oh, really, I say. But couldn't you, couldn't you just sleep a little longer? All right, then. You may tuck me into my sarcophagus. Come along with me. Huh? My sarcophagus? My mummy case. <laughs> yes, of course. Now, good night, dear princess. And after I've had a good sleep and given my brain a bit of a rest, I must have a long talk. Good night, then, until tomorrow. Mr. Reggie, sir. Mr. Reggie, it's time to get up. Mr. Reggie, it's nearly lunchtime, sir. Oh, you go to sleep, darling? But, sir, I have already slept. Darling, I... Oh, it's you, Wilkins. Great Scott, the princess. Where is she? Well, quick, Wilkins, man, my clothes, quick. I must see if she's real. Poor darling in that cold box all night. Well, hurry up, man, hurry up. I presume, sir, you wish to get up. I certainly, sir, just so, just so. Princess, Princess, wake up. It's nearly lunchtime. Do you know what lunch means? Well, you see, I'm not one of your dreams. I know. How can you forgive me for being so rude to you last night? What about some breakfast before we have a chat? I haven't eaten for 3,000 years. I don't need to eat now. That proves I'm not dreaming. You certainly have been asleep for 3,000 years. Why do you say that? Are you mocking me? No, Princess, but it's a long story. What am I going to do with you when Paula comes? When Paula comes? Yes. Paula's my fiancé. Your fiancé? Yes, the girl I'm engaged to be married to. How funny you are. When we loved a man in Egypt, we were married. Like that. Ah, but we're more civilized nowadays. We don't rush. <laughs> Great Scott, there is Paula. What am I going to do? Quick, you must hide. Dear, dear princess, I must put the lid on you. And remember, not a sound. Hello, Wilkins. Good morning, Master William. Oh, Wilkins, how many times have I to tell you there are two days in a man's life when he ceases to be a master. His 16th birthday and his wedding day. Quite so, quite so, sir. Speaking confidentially, man to man, my wife made that fact quite clear to me many years ago. Shall I announce you, Mr. William? Yes, you'd better warn him. <coughs> well, don't do that. Must you go around everywhere saying, <coughs> Frightening everybody out of their lives? I was about to announce a visitor, sir. But, uh, what with one thing and another? And as you had rather a late night this morning, sir, I thought you'd like time to collect your thoughts before I announce Miss Paula's brother. <gasps> oh, yes, of course. Show him in. Right, sir, sir. Mr. Billy Gregson. Hello, Reggie. Hello. Hello. I just called round to... Hold on, hold on, will you? Any, anywhere but there, please. Anywhere. Anywhere but there? Yes. Yeah. What's that? Looks like a sarcophagus. Oh, so you know the word too, huh? That's what she called it. She called it? Yes. She being? Oh, the princess, you idiot. The princess? <laughs> yes, the princess. What princess? Don't tell me. Oh, yes, yes, it's just the princess. Look <laughs> here, Reggie, what's the matter with you today? Too many late nights, I suppose. Ah, oh, well, this will put you right. My new number. Hold on, no, Billy, not that. I'm putting it on at the club tonight. You'll have the privilege of a special preview all to yourself. Oh, must I? Can't I hear it some other time? No. After the show, maybe. Yeah? No, you can't. Here goes. Oh, all right. You make me so sorry for everyone, for everyone who's not in love with you. I'm sorry for the girls who 
might have been you. I'm sorry for the boys who've never seen you. You make me so sorry for everyone. You're like a picture everyone should see. And I think it's such a pity I can't share you with the world So I'm sorry for everyone but me To look at you as I can do is lovely, I agree Yet strange though it may be, I'm filled with sympathy. It seems a shame, but there again, there's nothing I can do. But pity all those people who are not aware of you. You make me so sorry for everyone. For everyone who's not in love with you I'm sorry for the girls who might have been you I'm sorry for the boys who've never seen you You make me so sorry for everyone You're like a picture everyone should see. And I think it's such a pity I can't share you with the world. So I'm sorry for everyone but me. Well, what do you think of it? Not too bad, is it? <laughs> no, it's not bad at all. Pretty good for you. Good. Reggie, what have you got in that box? Just done a murder, got a body in it or something. <laughs> Billy, look, if I told you that there's an Egyptian princess in there, there's nothing in the world that would make you believe me, is there? There certainly isn't. <laughs> well, there is. There is what? Oh, there's an Egyptian princess in there. You are thrilling a lot today, Reggie. <laughs> Must have had a pretty thick night last night. That's Paula, I expect. You tell her it's the mummy case of an ancient Egyptian princess. Oh, no, no, Billy, look, this is no time for joking. Look, I've got something very important to say to Paula, alone. Yes, sir. Yes, it's Paula, all right. Well, I'll leave you two alone. <laughs> Hello, sis. Reggie's got a bit of a hangover, I think. Hello, Reggie. But why are you in the dark? Well, it's my eyes, you know, dear. I think I've got a... Nidotitis. Got what? Nidotitis. You know, it's caused by having sort of too much light about the place. Too much whiskey, you mean? <laughs> oh, no, that couldn't be. But tell me, dear, how, how are you? How, how's your toothache? Richard, what are you talking about? I've never had toothache in my life. Oh, and such lovely teeth, too. I love every one of them, dear. Yes, every one. But you are looking pale today, dear. Perhaps you don't get enough air. Perhaps you'd like some more air now, huh? Richard, you aren't trying to get rid of me, are you? Oh, well, that'll be the last thing, or nearly, that would enter my mind. There very musty smell about this room. Don't you notice it? Oh, yes. Uh, yes, sort of a mummy smell, you mean? Yes. What is it? Oh, that's just Uncle Wilfred. Oh, Uncle Wilfred? Well, not Uncle personally, but just some old musty books he once left me. Reggie, I have a feeling you're hiding something from me. I've no time to investigate now. Oh, thank you, dear. When I come back, I shall certainly look into it. Look into what, dear? This musty business. I'm off to the hairdressers now. Funny. You don't want me to take you to the hairdressers, do you, darling? Well, I must say I'm flattered by your obvious desire for my company. But no, you stay here and see if there's something in your Uncle Wilfred's musty old books about working off a hangover. <laughs> yes, yes, I will, darling. Goodbye, darling. Great Scott.
Well, what do you make of it, Wilkins? But, well, sir, it's a, a bit of an enigma to me, sir. <laughs> oh, as bad as that, eh? I don't suppose you believe that Egyptian princesses can go back to life after 3,000 years. Well, sir, and not being acquainted with any such ladies, I really couldn't say, sir. <laughs> no, and I don't know either. I may be nuts, Wilkins, or I may be dreaming, but who cares? All I do know is that she's come back to London. So, whoopee! <laughs> Yes, sir. Pour me out a whiskey and soda, Wilkins, and pour one for yourself. Well, good help, Wilkins. <laughs> Now I hope you see how difficult it all is. And I'm difficult too. And very lovely. Well, if you really think so, you'll do as I ask. After all, you helped your uncle to bring me back to this wicked world. And I want to see how wicked it is. You must take me places. Or are you ashamed to be seen with me? Ashamed? Of course not. I can't make up my mind whether you are real. Oh, don't worry about that. I am real. Nothing else matters. And more beautiful than ever. Do you want me to show you places? <laughs> Londoners would stare their heads off if they saw you walking around like that. Am I so strange? Then you are ashamed to be seen with me. Of course not. But one of the first things you must do if you want to mix with modern people is to look modern yourself. So be it. Do with me as you will. Good morning, madam. Oh, good morning. Tell me, has Miss Paula been here? She has. She just left a few moments ago, sir. Fine. And now we can get to work on you. Get to work on me? Why, am I still unpleasing to your eyes? Darling, of course not. But you remember what I told you about being modern? Uh, Alphonse, forward, please. Qu'est-ce que c'est que ça, alors? Ah, bonjour, mademoiselle. Uh, will you please step into the salon? Whatever you think will suit me best. I'm rather out of touch with things. I've been away 3,000 years. Comment? Ha <laughs> ha! Mademoiselle will have her little joke, eh? You have been abroad, perhaps? No, as a matter of fact, I've been asleep. Eh bien, Mademoiselle. Now, I suggest a style very suitable for your type of beauty would be Creation Princess Radio. It is a style based on ancient Egyptian but the last word in modern fashion. Oh, very chic. Modern fashion? Oui, mademoiselle. Isn't this creation, Princess Raviola, the same as my present style? Oh, mais non, mademoiselle. Your present style is, oh, it is quite up to date. But to be really modern, oh, you must go back thousands of years. Really? Well, I'm in your hands, Alphonse. Bien, mademoiselle, bien. <laughs> Where did you find the Princess Raviola style? Oh, it is a style well known in the hairdressing business, mademoiselle. They say she lived over 3,000 years ago. <laughs> she was a one. Do you know? They tell me that she had more boyfriends than there are days in the year. And that there was one evening just outside Khartoum, mademoiselle. Alphonse, please. Oh, eh bien, mademoiselle, comme vous voulez. Who knows if it is true? You do not know, I do not know. But it is a good story just the same. No doubt she was the one. Oh, <laughs> if I could lay hands on her now, I could teach her a thing or two. Well, 
world did Egypt do better than this 3,000 years ago? Why, yes. But since when was the beauty of a woman enshrouded as if it were a thing of the ashamed? Uh, Billy Gregson. Oh, oh! I beg your pardon, young man. Granted, old girl. Nice little place you've got here. But you'll have to watch your step, you know. What do you mean, watch my step? Well, they closed down the Bluebird the other night, and the chorus was wearing more than that one. Nightclub, young man. You are wrong. This is a respectable dressmaker's. And may I ask what you are doing here? Oh, you may ask with pleasure. I came here to wait for my sister and see what's going on here. Not much by the look of it. If you let an audience in here, you'd have the windmill out of business in a week. Now all you need is a young man like myself who's strictly in the groove, and you've got a first-class show. All we need is a renegade young bluebell who is strictly in the rut, as you would call it, and we'd all find ourselves inside a first-class police station. And I've no doubt you'd feel quite at home. You, you impudent young puppy. Get out of this establishment. Not before I've shown you how this place should be run. Now listen, all you ladies, I've a tale I'd like to tell. And please don't think it's only a formality. To read a stirring romance in a book so very well But it's infinitely better in reality If you were seeking romance, could you find it here today? If you want to know the answer, will you step this way? Now if you decide it's for romance you look Cupid won't ask you how well you can cook Be beautifully dressed, he'll imagine the rest Oh, you've got to be smart to start love You don't need a gown reaching down to the floor It's better to show just a little bit more To make him look twice, what mother's advice But you've got to be smart to start love now the whole world seeks a lover, losing every trick it can. So keep style, for it's well worthwhile, and you'll be like a mounty cause you'll get your man. Choose to your style with the feminine grace. You painted a picture, you're wanting a case. And any frame matches a beautiful face. Oh, you've got to be smart to start love. Whatever your build, if you're fat or you're thin, we'll see you are fitted as neat as a pin. You mustn't come out where you ought to go in, for you've got to be smart to start long. If you want to hit, but you find you're a miss, you won't be a wallflower dancing in this. With partners galore, you'll be out on the floor, for you've got to be smart to slow. Now the old folks tend to romance with the well-cooked taboo pie. But you work today in a different way if you want to be the apple of the young man's eye. Say that romance has too many locks. Beautiful girls can be bought by the box. We give it away with the first seven frocks. For you've got to be smart, you can take that to heart. You've got to be smart to start love. Raviola. Miss Raviola. Haven't we, uh, Princess Raviola is the name. Princess Raviola? Oh, I say, you haven't been to Egypt or anything, have you? Only I'm looking for an Egyptian princess, or someone like one, to play a joke on a friend of mine. I am an Egyptian princess. Fine. Well, how'd you like to come to the house of a friend of mine and hide in the sarcophagus? It'll give him the fright of his life. Tell him you're 3,000 years old or something. It's to stop him drinking. I am 3,000 years old. Do you mind saying that again? Slowly. I am an Egyptian princess. I am 3,000 years old. That's what I thought you said. 
And that stops me drinking. You know who that was, I suppose? Why, yes, your friend Billy. He wants me to go back and impersonate a 3,000-year-old Egyptian princess at a friend's house. Oh, he does, does he? And what did you say? I said I already was a 3,000-year-old Egyptian princess, but I don't think he believed me. And did he say why he wanted you to do this? Why, yes, his friend's got a sarcophagus, and he said if I was to hide inside, it would give him a fright and stop him from drinking. Stop him drinking, eh? <laughs> well, come on, dear princess. This is where we go for a taxi. My dear, did you say it was easy to get married in Egypt? Why, yes, we love a person. We go like that, and we are married. Like this? Yes, but you cannot. You are engaged, so you say. Ah, <laughs> but that's the advantage of our modern laws. We become engaged first, and then we break it off. Just like this. Well, here goes. I break my engagement with Paula. And now that I'm a free man, Raviola Dolly. Will you marry me? Well, that's the first time I've been kissed by one 2,975 years older than myself. <laughs>
And the hope he kind of looks like me, hey, hey, he ought to look a lot like me. Summer comes, we'll shut up the flats and go to your palace of Thebes. And I'll show you the pyramid where I was buried. Oh, darling, please. Haven't you any feeling? I'm sorry, but we will go for long walks in the desert, won't we? I know a lovely little place just outside of Carton. Yes, right? yes, darling, you said so. Darling, I believe you're jealous. Oh, I certainly am. I'd like to lay my hands on some of those pharaohs. <laughs> London's not so bad, is it? 
Shows easy for thing or two, eh? On the contrary, there was a nightclub in the Delta called the Golden Calf that would put all these little drinking dens in the shade. Oh, rot, dear. They didn't have nightclubs in your time, surely. We had nightclubs and enormous orchestras of harps and flutes, dancing girls, and such delicacies to eat. Yeah, and such bilge water to drink. Oh, I've heard all about your ancient Egyptian drinks. Now, give me a whiskey any day. You don't have to be given one. You take one. But we had theaters and races and games. And radios and cinemas and amusement parks and dance halls. <laughs> no, Egypt could never come up to good old London for entertainment. Oh, you may have a few dreary old scribes dressed in goatskins now and again, blowing pipes and things. And some of the lads may be thrown to the lions now and again. But give me an evening at the good old blue paddock heat any night. Are you sure, Reggie? Oh, yes, darling, of course I'm sure. Perfectly sure? Yes. Very well, then. We will go to the Palace of the Pharaohs. <laughs> And so, my master, you are now king and ruler of all. Thy word is law. By Jove, I actually feel as if I were. I seem to be. I am. <laughs> Music, wine, and dances. You require something, master? Yes. But first, I seem to recognize your face. Master, I've had it even longer than I have served thee. Perhaps the Silence. Wine. Let's have more music, wine, and dance. For tonight, I celebrate the possession of the finest jewel of the East, Princess Raviola. On with the dancers. <laughs> Delight. Come a little closer that I may steal a little kiss. Ah, my inconsistent lover, must I share thy kisses with a goblin? Well, man, is there to be no further entertainment for your master? Just so, sir. Just so. <laughs>
May I beg your attention, Master? What now? Trouble, Master. Trouble in the harem. The interest you've shown in Princess Raviola has reached the ears of your wives. And they refuse to make room for even one more among them. The overcrowding problem is acute, Master. Then extend the building. Am I to be dictated to by last year's fashion? Just so, sir. Just so. A toast. A toast to your eyes like a serpent of the Nile. To your languid lips and burning kisses. To your delicate feet, a burning toast. My jewel hath both charm and talent. So dance. Dance for your master. So be it, O oh intoxicated one. Beautiful, my dearest. Beautiful. You did not even see me. I did. I did, my lovely one. How'd you like the toga? Wearing them short this year, girl. That boy. That face. Why should I know him? Who is he that his appearance should fill me with such dread? Or shame? Almost as if I were hiding something. Oh, you have nothing to fear from him. He is the court songwriter. But he often drops in here to sing and play. The liar. Is he? Oh, no. That is his instrument. Let him play. The liar. <laughs> I had too much to eat and later when I fell asleep I had a dream I'm glad I never missed it. <laughs> to ancient Egypt I did go umpteen thousand years ago and I saw things I didn't think existed. I learned about that land of long ago some things that even Pharaoh didn't know. I found myself in Egypt, in really ancient Egypt, on the beautiful banks of the Nile. A girl came up and eyed me, then she sat down beside me, and said she'd entertain me for a while. She said that hypnotizing crocodiles she'd got the knack. She hypnotized one there and then, and bravely turned her back. What happened then, it's back to tell, but now her act don't go so well on the beautiful banks. Of the Nile. I went into a harem, a really 
Egyptian harem on the beautiful banks of the Nile. The girls all crowded round me and took me as they found me. I thought I'd finish off my trip in style. I started up and ordered lots of lovely things to eat. Then sat down on the sofa with the girls all round my feet. We started playing blind man's box, but that's when my alarm went off on the beautiful banks of the Nile. Let me plant another kiss on your luscious lips. Sir. I think so, Wilkins. 